here right now. I'm sure uh, maybe next year, May or June, you're going to graduate. And you're looking forward to probably getting a job or working somewhere. But the bottom line is, there are people who got graduated last year. They are still at home. Some of them are not getting jobs. The basic principle is demand and supply. That's what is going on right now. People have needs, you need to supply it. So you need to be very innovative, you need to be smart. These days, it's not really... Uh, academics is good. I mean, I'm also a graduate, but the point is you have to always be innovative, think on the spot. It's, it's about time and season. People need stuff, you give it to them, you excel, you move on. But if you want to go by the books, it's not really working that way now. You have to be up on your ground, you have to hustle hard because people out there are not smiling. You have to be hungry. Whoever makes it in life right now is those who are really hungry for success. Even if they have to step on your head, push you aside, it's like the Machiavelli principle. Nobody is giving a hook to anyone. I came into the movie industry, it was, it was tough. As I rightly said, you don't need validation from anyone. They didn't really accept me. I had to fight my way through to become the Prince of the Shed that is standing before you. So that is some of the experiences you are going to encounter when you leave the shores of KUNST and you are out there looking for jobs or probably you think you have connects and people give you a job. It's okay, but it's better for you to be your own CEO where you make decisions by yourself, where you are the boss and you don't have to depend on anyone or you don't have to do anything for for favors to stop because you, you know your strength and you know, let's say you live in a particular locality and you know the needs of the locality. You know what they need there. If you are smart, you supply what they need. It could be it could be water, it could be good road, it could be school, it could be restaurant, it could be anything. That is how the world is rationalizing right now. Secondly, I'm going to talk about relationships. You see, the reason why most people don't really achieve their dreams or make it to where they are destined to be is the kind of relationships they keep. In school right now, I know a lot of people probably are into relationships, they have a certain kind of friends, they grow with. But the bottom line is, for you to be great, sometimes you need isolation. I'm not saying don't be friendly, don't have friends, but some friends are like a distraction. Oh yes, let's take for instance, you're a young man, you're a young girl here, yeah, you're probably level 200 or 300, you have project works to do, you, you are in a relationship, and unfortunately for you, it is when it's getting close to examination time, that is when your girlfriend gets honey. That is when she needs to call you to come and... Yes. That is when she needs your attention. That is when she calls you to come to a room, when you are supposed to be in the library studying, when you are supposed to be making the grades. These are some of the things we compromise. At the end of the day, if you are supposed to make a first class, you make a second class, lower or upper, and in your mind you say, oh, when I get out there, my uncle has some connection. No, you have to maximize the time you have here. Because whatever you want, a lot of people want it. It's not just about you. It's like a thousand people fighting for one spot. So you have to be the best at whatever you do. You have to compromise certain relationship. Certain friendship that is not helping you. It's not everybody that will truly understand your dream or what you are going for. Sometimes when you share your dream or aspirations with friends, they tend to look down on you as an act. If you are on office today. It, it happened to me. When I told people I was going to be a star, they said, ah, what is wrong with you? The people that have been doing movies, they don't even have a car, they don't have nothing. And as I did, it wasn't really lucrative for the, the, the veteran actors and actresses. But when we came into the scene, we changed it. We, we've, you know, we've made it more attractive and everybody want to be an actor and everybody want to be an actress. You understand? So all I'm saying to you guys seated here this evening, don't compromise your life for certain relationship. Don't know what you are going for. Be hungry. If it's success, be hungry because I'm sure most of your parents and your family members believe in you. That is why they invested in you. That is why they brought you to an investing. For the reason why you are here, you must achieve it. You don't have to follow certain French and you know certain people that they, they've made it look like Omudia. They are tagging along with you and they are slowing you down. 
times that you are supposed to use in engaging in you know useful stuff, you are just following them, gallivanting all over the place. Before you know, four years is over. You probably will get up with a uh, maybe third class or whatever, and you're out there and you say it's the devil or uh, something is not going right. You understand? Also, believe in yourself and know that there are going to be impediments, there are going to be struggles, things are not going to go the way you plan. But if you believe in yourself and you believe in who you are, obviously whatever you do, there will be obstacles, there will be disappointment, there will be rejection. Even people that you hold in high esteem, people that you look forward to, they will disappoint you. But as they say, there's hope of a tree. If it be cut down by the sink of water, it will sprout again. Always get up when you fall. Don't sleep there. Get up when you fall. And um, wherever you find yourself, get to be different. We are all different in our ways. It's good to be inspired by people. It's good to emulate certain qualities from people. But be yourself. There's, there's greatness in you. There's something in you that any other person doesn't have. And it takes you, the individual, to find out what it is. And it is that thing that is going to make you achieve whatever is destined for you. That is, if you are able to find out what you are good at, and you know, that purpose that God has placed in you. And aside everything, I'm not going to go Holy Spirit on you guys, or, I mean, I know other people are from, have different religions, but the bottom line is, in all life endeavors, if you don't have the God factor, you struggle. Because you need people to buy what you sell. You need people to appreciate you for who you are. You need people to accept you. There are a lot of actors in Ghana, there are a lot of producers, musicians. If you don't have acceptance, you struggle. And that is where prayer comes to, to bear. You need to pray for acceptance, for favor, where you meet people and whatever you are doing, they'll fall in love with you and they will help you and they will push you to become whoever you are destined to be. So you need favor, you need to pray for favor, you need to pray for acceptance. And then also, touch lives. You don't need to have 100 million to affect a life. No. Even around your friends, if somebody is in need of something, be, be that a hard Be that leader. And it's about time the youth of Ghana get involved in decision making in this country. We live in a country whereby, I'm not trying to throw any shade, but it looks like most of the decisions that is made for we, the youth, and people like you that are coming up are made by older people. Our girlfriends. Older people that are going to probably go to heaven or whatever very soon. <laughs> and if they make such decisions for you, at the end of the day, we are the future of tomorrow. So they are making such decisions based on how they think and how they see life. But we are the upcoming ones. We are more innovative, we are more vibrant. So we need to get you know, involved in decision making. If something is going on in this country and it's not right, we need the youth to voice out. Don't be afraid. You need to voice out. We need to collectively put the nation on a run. We need to be part of decision making. Because at the end of the day, if they make decisions for us, whichever way we are going to live in it. So I'm, I'm encouraging all of you, I'm urging all of you, as you are students, you are the future leaders, always make a conscious effort to know what is going on in the country. Contribute. Give your quota. And um, the guy has been signaling me that it's time, right? Okay. So in a nutshell, what I'm going to say is, have a big dream. Have a very big dream. Believe in yourself. Don't let anybody talk you down. Don't condescend for anything. Always hold your head high. And whatever it is that you want to do, you achieve it. Because I stand in here, I'm a typical example. Nobody gave me a dog chance. But I kept fighting, and I'm still fighting. So at the end of the day, that is life. Thank you, guys. She always allowed me to ask my questions, even if she didn't have the answers. So I remember I just used to, I would just, when the TV was off, I would watch the television and think, how are people inside of it? It baffled me. So I knew that for whatever reason, I don't know how, but I wanted to be inside that TV. Now it may sound silly, but what I didn't realize at the time was, there's something called purpose. Everybody repeat, purpose. Repeat for me again, purpose. purpose. 
And bear in mind, this was in the 80s in Kumasi. The auntie said to me that, oh, there are very little people. And when you turn on the TV, they speak for you and they talk for you. And then when you turn it off, they go to sleep. How old? I was six. I believed it. And it probably stuck in my mind that until one day, I was walking past a TV repair shop where that very big bag had been taken off. And of course, me being the inquisitive child I was, I went to look inside the TV. And what did I see? I saw wires, I saw that big frying pan thing, and whatever else it was. Just to tell you a little bit about that, from my inquisitiveness as a child of wanting to get into TV, it always led me on my path to where I am now. I don't have very, very much time, so I'll just jump through. So right from there, uh, at the age of nine, my family moves to what you want to go into. Their future doctors, lawyers, you know, leaders. Hey, who knows, a future president, vice president, I don't know. But what is your purpose that drives you? What leads you? What may seem so silly that nobody understands? But you're on a quest to discover, even if everybody says it doesn't make any sense. For me, it took looking at a TV to know that how do I get enter inside. And we're 2019 now. Um, and I started my career in 1997 as a teenager. So it makes me 22 years in the media and TV industry. And I'll tell you something, after 22 years, I feel like I'm just getting started. Because the evolution of my career is, I wish I had more time, I can tell you more about the pressures from trying to be a Ghanaian girl in the UK, trying to cultivate a career with a name like Ama Hunedu Abebrese, where they can't pronounce your name, so you're now, your name now becomes Ama Hunedu Abebrese. <laughs> it's true. To move into Ghana, where it's like, oh, a dear man, bro, for Sam, why is this person now? So then you move back to your place, which is home, but yet initially you're not accepted because I'm a foreigner and I sound different. So, whereas people are doing Lafa, you are penalized for sounding a certain way. Tell you to tell you all this is that it's never easy. There's no point in this where, for some people, I'm sure some people it's easy for, but there's nobody, if I was to get every single person and speak to you for two, three minutes, I'm sure you all tell me about the different struggles you have or the different hurdles you have to overcome. But the one thing I've always had was, for me, I remember back to that little girl and that fascination of the TV and remember why I always wanted to get into the TV in the first place. So whether acting, whether behind the camera, whether producing, I also own my own production company and we produce different things. I've never stopped dreaming. I've never stopped wondering. So as I end here and as I look at this room of possibilities, I'm going to ask you all to challenge yourself. What was your younger self? What was that purpose that you didn't understand? What was it? Was it a football? Was it hair? Was it painting? I don't know what it is. I believe that we have some of these things to link us to what we'll do in our future. So I will challenge you to make that link and to see what it is your perhaps majorly part of your purpose, but maybe you put it onto the back burner. Um, 
and just always remember that because I do feel like if you remember why you started in the first place, it helps you go for the long and often, often very challenging journey in your career. So I will stop there because time won't allow me to even go through most of my notes that I had. They've told me my time is up. Um, thank you and I'll take some questions. Hello wonderful viewers. It's still the Tech Talk, um, the 2019 edition at the Kwame Nkrumah University of Science and Technology. And I have with me here this wonderful lady who goes by the name Nora, affiliated to the Unity Hall and also does chemistry, right? Yeah. So Nora, how did you find today's program? Oh, it was very nice. Um, I, I got to find out lots of things I didn't know about uh, on the entrepreneurship skill. I really got to learn more outside the classroom, you see. Yeah. So you got to learn a lot of things today. Yeah. I got so what are some of the things? you learned today? Well, um, from the what last because uh, no, the spell came before the last because he was like the lot of sacrifice that you have to like give in before you make it uh, like in any business. So even though they'll come out and say, oh, entrepreneurs, they make money and all, but it's not really about the money making, okay? They also sacrifice a lot to be able to get where they are now. I have beside me two amazing and handsome gentlemen. Please, what's your name? My name is Benjamin Ozusabon. But most people call me BOS. Please, what course? I'm reading political science, third year. Okay, that's cool. And please, what's your name? Management, Eugene. Course? Publishing studies by Eugene's Corporation. Okay, so tell me, how did you see the program? Oh, you know, the organizer was very poor, to be honest. But, you know, what I heard from the resource persons was very upgrade. And, you know, I must make something better of our for me, okay. okay. So can you tell me just one thing you remembered from what they said? Oh, you know, as an entrepreneur, you need to have that kind of um, gladness to take risks so that you can move on in life. That's it. Thank you so much. All right, thank you. Okay, so Mr. Benji, BOS, please tell me what did you also learn from this amazing program? Because I know it was amazing for you, wasn't it? Well, yeah, it was amazing. It was amazing though. But I was just disappointed when they, they told us that um, the minister isn't coming. 